multiple of yeah. trillions. You're talking about derivative markets and yeah. hundreds of trillions of dollars. Yeah. Eight, nine trillion yeah. dollars in the U.S. has been, since uh, Paulson uh, approved that $700 billion dollar a TARP fund that quickly went to eight or nine trillion oh. in a matter of weeks without any right. congressional oversight whatsoever. And uh, the money's being thrown into this black hole of debt. It doesn't seem to be improving prices whatsoever. It's just going into the bankers' pockets uh, and they're paying themselves huge bonuses. And when, when the automakers go to Washington for their bailout money, uh, they're told, well, give us the plan, give us the business plan. You know, they're ham, they, they're haul because the auto workers are the savers and the workers and they're discriminated against in the American economy, where the borrowers and the speculators are given all the breaks, are given all the free money, are given all of the uh, perks. Now there's a huge, uh, I would say, uh, conflict between these two groups in the global economy and in the U.S. economy. It's savers versus speculators. But in Germany now, we know that they've had a history of hyperinflation, that they are one of the biggest savers in the world. They seem to be hunkered down for this uh, uh, downturn. And in the U.S., however, and, you know, talking to Alec Baldwin in Los Angeles, you know, Alec, what you're telling, what, what I'm hearing from you is that the people in the U.S. seem gobsmacked that suddenly the Dow can go down, suddenly the money's not there, and there's a, it seems to me there's a, almost a sense of shock. Is that kind of what you're seeing? I think that, you know, most people go through their lives and what they're waiting for now is, you know, you tell them that corporations are going to continue to pay themselves these huge bonuses with bailout money and so forth. They're, they're, so, uh, they're so overwhelmed that you know, they need proof of anything. Most Americans are very suspicious of the media here in this country, and uh, you know, they're not really quite sure what is real and what's really happening. All they know is that, that that's real is they have less money to spend or they're told that what money they do have they shouldn't spend, or they're told that they don't have a job anymore. They want to focus on what's real. I think a big turn of events here will be the, um, uh, the retail season, which we're in the thick of now. And if you come out of this holiday season, you're going to see a thinning of the herd here. Some major retailers are going to go out of business. Uh, and, 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 and that, to me, is what is in store for the U.S. economy. And I don't gloat about this. I don't think this is a great thing. But one of these major automakers is going to go out of business, probably GM. Okay. GM, G, GM's going to die. I mean, the, the, the problem with the bailout for the automakers is it's just forestalling. You, you, you couldn't give GM enough money. You could give GM $150 billion, and they still would burn through that and, 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 and kill themselves. Okay, Alec, I want to pick up on that point for a second. Here we are in the year 2009. Here we are in the Oracle. 2009, the automakers are been uh, given money, but the underlying fact is their basic underlying business model is broken. So isn't in America the place where if you're not doing well, the market takes you out of the game and somebody else gets a chance? They send somebody else into the batter's box to try to hit a home run? If you can't perform, get out of the game. Why has America become soft? Why has America gone down the path of what would it look like state-sanctioned socialism by assisting the weak and, and at the expense of the strong. Isn't that a completely oppo opposite of the American uh, system, as it were? And uh, so with the auto companies, uh, a lot of people, smart people, financial analysts, are saying let them die and let some new companies take their place. Is that too that, harsh? That, that, that's exactly, listen, everybody's afraid. They're told that if we put, the, 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 the constant drumbeat that they hear from the U.S. media is about the, the, what, what, what directly, what the number of direct, job loss would be from GM going out of business, then the, uh, the resonating, uh, 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 you know, the second stage job loss for individual manufacturers who are suppliers to GM, people are talking about job loss anywhere from, you know, 120,000 up to 250,000, which would be another untenable shock wave for this economy. There's, you know, they're saying that can't happen, that can't happen. But the point is this, it's got to happen sooner or later. That's what people aren't, aren't realizing. Right. And, and, and what's going to happen in this country is, and, and I wrote this on a blog at Huffington Post over a year ago, is we've reached this stage where a major automobile manufacturer is going to die, a major investment banking firm or two has already died, a major uh, um, uh, a television network is going to die, a major airline is going to die. The, 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 the U.S. economy is not as big as it was, and so now these pieces of its 
uh, of, of its excess have to fall away. Yeah, well, and you know what? We're going to see in the next year. You, you know what? I really uh, find, and I uh, find it objectionable. I'll say this. I'm curious what the rest of the panel weighs in on this, but it seems like the strategy used by U.S. government now to get policies through government is fear mongering. They're scaring people to death. They're uh, not including the fact that with every job lost, there's a possibility for a job gain. There's a dynamism in American economy. They're not focusing on that. They're just fear mongering. And it's a well, carryover. It's a, well, let me finish. There's a carryover from the Iraq war. You know, the Iraq war, to get people into that war, was pure fear mongering. They just pressed the, the fear button, uh, Bush and Cheney. They said, we're not going to look at this on any weighted basis or any balanced view. We're just going to hit the fear button, the panic button, tell people we're going to take away their credit card, going to take away their consumer products if they don't agree to this war. And now that that worked for them, for uh, the gang. They're using it now to scare people into accepting ridiculous bailout packages where the bankers have no accountability at all, no transparency at all. They're totally giving the automakers a raw deal, and there's no balance in the economy. Now, well, I, I, well first of all, uh, when the Oracle has a lot of espresso, it's just thrilling, I want to say that. <laughs> The oracle is just, when he gets on a roll, I mean, uh, uh, watch out. But um, the, the, um, I, th I think that Americans, you're, you're right, they, they, they look at the situation. It is a lot about fear, uh, but there, there are corrections in this economy that are going to happen. There are people that are going to lose their jobs. I mean, you know, the, there was a big ad in the New York Times the other day, uh, and, and this is a common complaint amongst progressives in this country. They said, listen, you put up $150, million, $150 billion so far, and you pledged $750 billion to bail out these financial institutions. And the problem is you can never again in this country say we can't find the money for something that's important. Yeah. If you, if you, for health care, for education, we, we could pay tuitions. In this, this, this country has an education crisis right now. The statistics about education in the United States are very bad. Once again, only rich people can afford an education. Mm. And, and, and the statistics in this country of what it would take to provide free tuition to everybody who, not, not who it was a combination of their need basis and their academic performance, it would probably cost in the neighborhood of 40 to $50 billion a year to pay free the tuition of everybody that needed the money, that couldn't pay, and was uh, uh, satisfied the criteria performance-wise, 40 or 50 billion, to pay the college tuition of everybody in the United States. Yeah. They've got the money for that, but they won't do that. that. That's the problem is we're spending the money, the money is still here. Yeah. And this money we're investing up, we're, we're in a terrible problem. We have some assets to get us that. This is like a guy that's standing by the side of the road and you've got 25 cents in your pocket. What do you do? Do you make a phone call and somebody pick you up? Or do you go buy a stick of gum? Yeah, okay. That's what America's doing. They're not making the phone call for somebody to come pick us up. Yeah.